Welcome to On Air with Cash. Our guest today is a screenwriter, director, actress, and author. Her award-winning feature film, Lola's Last Letter, which she wrote, directed, and starred in, premiered at the TCL Chinese Theater in Hollywood at Dances with Films and was distributed by Sony's The Orchard after a successful festival run. Please welcome Valerie Brandy. Hi, everybody. Nice to, like, e-meet you. <laughs> Valerie, it is so nice to have you on the show today. I like to call it kind of like my renaissance period because I started acting when I was a kid and then college, started working at WME and then I was doing the agency thing and then people were like, you know, you should do something more creative again, Cash. And so then I got a manager and then two things happened. I got uh, Undateable John. Uh, then right after that, we did this film called Jack and Cocaine. And it was right then when I really started to get involved in the local scene in LA, which you were kind of the star of at the time. I remember being at Dances with Films and you were like the talk of the festival. And I watched your movie, Lola's Last Letter. I was so fascinated by uh, the story that you told and then just even your story as well too, how you wrote, directed, started. And I'm like, this girl's phenomenal. And I was so grateful we got to talk to you afterwards. And I've just seen the way your career's blossomed. I didn't know I was the star of that time. Why didn't anyone tell me you on that? You were living in the moment. You know it's true. Yeah. No, I, I totally see your renaissance and I love that I was like any part of that. I think that's really cool. And I think all artists have like periods of reinvention, you know, like post pandemic, I'm going, kind of going through one right now. And uh, it's definitely nice to hear that like I was any part of your like artistic reinvention. That's very cool. Valerie, no, you've really been an inspiration. I saw the way that people responded to you. And Lola's last letter was at the Napa Film Festival. And I know that you finished UCLA within three years. You've had this ambition to start acting. You were on Justified. And so really, what was your motivation? Be like, you know what, I'm, I'm making this movie. I'm getting it started. And then to just really kickstart it after this premiere. I think I wanted more creative control and input. I've always been a person who like imagined scenes playing out, like even... <laughs> This is so sick and twisted, but even like, you know, if there's someone I'm like mad at in my daily life before I go confront them, I'm like, let's imagine this fight, <laughs> you know, <laughs> predict how this will go. And I just always sort of interpreted things in a narrative format. Like even my dreams are very narrative. There's like a beginning, middle and end. And um, I think that really helped me as an actor because you can contextualize like where you belong in the performance and, and what your role is in the work as a whole. And that can affect the choices that you make. Um, but I, I always like craved more and I always wanted to dictate where a narrative goes. And I think that um, when you're an artist, you need to be open-minded about how your art is going to happen. And sometimes the universe will bring you more than you thought you could have, you know, like I had studied screenwriting in high school. I had done a weekly mentorship where I drove every Saturday to LA to like work with a very kind screenwriter who taught me a lot. I won it through International Screenwriters Association. So I, I had that experience, but it still didn't feel, it still, I didn't know that it was like a real job still. I know that sounds crazy, but it's like actors are very visible. And then once I got in the business, I realized, no, you can, there are people behind the scenes actually deciding what happens. And that sounded pretty good to me. So I just let life lead me where it, where I wanted to. That you did. And your writing career also began when you joined the Writers Guild of America at age 20 and you were one of the youngest members at the time. Yeah. Yeah. That was crazy. I, uh, I'm a feature captain now. So, you know, so many years later, I helped shepherd new writers who come into the guild and, and work with them to create like a team environment so they're not alone. But um, I love my union. I did join really young. And in like the true immaturity of that, I get really mad that like there was this welcome ceremony and they gave out certificates, but a couple of names were left off the list through like a printing error. So I was one of those and I never got a certificate. <laughs> and I like, I like bug everyone about it. And they're like, it's 10 years later. Why do you want a certificate? <laughs> I'm like to hang on my wall, of course. <laughs> like, hello. But um, no, I love the Writers Guild. I've met so many supportive, amazing writers. And it's like, it's the dream union. It's just so supportive of its members. After Dances with Films and after you have this successful uh, festival run with Lola's Last Letter, you get a distribution deal. And then you went on to become a staff writer at Disney. Yes, so I was part of their um, staff writers program in the live action feature division, and they kept a few of us on the lot to kick around ideas and um, develop and work on stories that they were trying to crack. And so 
Uh, yeah, I had a really great experience there. The, the people that work there are wonderful and care so much about the stories that they tell. Um, the type of stories they tell are very aligned with my aesthetic. Uh, I like happy endings. I like magic and I don't do anything particularly cynical. Um, I may write comedies that are, you know, okay saying what is wrong with the world occasionally, but I tend to stick to like rom-coms, family space, things that make people believe in the beauty of their dreams. Like that's really my taste. And I, I think that's the, the taste there as well. And I, I believe the world needs that, especially now. Oh, you said it. I'm the same way. And I feel like I approach different characters or different stories where there's a message that I'm going for. There's something that I think needs to be addressed or an interesting concept that I want to roll with. But at the end of the day, it's like I'm sitting and watching movies just for my own enjoyment. Like, okay, it's been a long day. I want to zone yeah. out. And I'm like, what am I really invested in? For me, it's like, there's something that I might think is cool, but then I'm always mentally thinking, you know, what's, how is this transcending to the audience? You know, what are they getting out of it? I feel like I try to go creatively, whether it's a character or a concept that I'm working on. Yeah, I love that. And I think I think people need it now more than ever. We all have that feeling that we've been through a really hard time. And, and I think for a lot of people that's continuing and we just want to feel happy, you know, we just want to feel good and believe that good things can happen and they absolutely can. I think mindset is a big part of that. So I agree with you. I don't do anything existential, nothing cynical. <laughs> I like to make people smile. And that you do. You did not slow down at all during the pandemic. You wrote and published your story. It's a trilogy, Animals We Are, and it's available on Amazon now. It is. Yeah, I didn't expect the, the novels to be a trilogy when I started, um, but I, I had more to say, so I kept writing. Uh, the first book follows a woman named Zoe who is taking a camping trip with her boyfriend, Mike, in Yosemite. And as they're taking this camping trip with a group, someone uh, is a killer and they, they don't know who it is and they get separated and the, the killer takes Mike hostage and she, uh, Zoe tries to find her boyfriend and has to survive in the wilderness. So it's a feminist thriller in the sense that the woman is not necessarily being rescued. She's doing the rescuing and uh, it's a survival thriller because she has to survive out in Yosemite backcountry, which most people never get to see. It's like this beautiful part of Yosemite that you actually need like a special permit to explore and hike and camp in. Yeah, most people have not been and, and you can get there on horseback. Like when I was a kid, I did a week long tour on horseback through the Yosemite backcountry. Yeah, so it's a it's a three book series and it's a thriller. It's very atmospheric. And I like to think it gets inside a woman's mind and it really plays with this idea like when you have a new relationship, when you're dating someone new, the ghosts of your past can kind of haunt you and make you ask, like, can I trust this person? How do you know? Like, at what point do you fully, fully trust another person? But again, you can trust me to give you some kind of happy ending. <laughs> I'm not going to leave you with something like that's a real bummer and, you know, apocalyptic and sad. I'm going to give you, this means sad things won't happen, but I'm going to give you like some kind of happy ending. I love it. And that's what you do. Because even with Lola's last letter, you took on the starring role, the writing role, directing role. And you did tell it, it was a tragic story. But like you said, it's like you want someone to be happy. And I remember you, you don't know what Lola's past is. You know, you're you're dealing with her and her uh, relationships with her friends, her boyfriend. There's hints throughout the story. And then it's revealed at the end. But then I felt like there is this beautiful moment of closure for Lola and the people that she's affected. It was really about overcoming obstacles. We've all had stuff that's come up in our life that's been hard to deal with. You do take on complex issues and complex themes, but then like you said, you, you're you into entertaining people and you want people to be happy. So I do like there is a positive outcome while demonstrating these strengths in your characters. Yeah, I really like to believe in redemption and atonement. I think the person in question has to want it, you know, and with Lola's last letter, um, our, our main character certainly wants to atone for a mistake in the past. It's just figuring out how. Um, it's funny that you compare the two because in Animals We Are, small spoiler alert, <laughs> I'm not gonna, like give too much away, but in the third book that I recently, uh, that was recently published, it's, it, she gives someone a choice to admit that they were wrong and, and redeem themselves or I can't, it's spoiler, or to take a different path. We'll just say that. But there is still this idea of redemption and owning our actions. And I think maybe 
you know, we all make mistakes, but maybe that's the difference between a person who's behaving well and a person who uh, is behaving poorly. I think taking accountability for our actions and admitting we were wrong is uh, a really positive character trait and something that we should encourage. We should, when it's reasonable, allow people paths back to earn uh, redemption from, from their mistakes when we can. I think that's that's humanity. Oh, I, I couldn't have said that better. And I've even in uh, discussions that I've had, uh, even on the show or just with uh, friends and other colleagues of mine, I do feel even the last couple of years, just the shift of the industry, COVID, we're all just adjusting. And I think moving forward to something, to, to a new way of life, whether we're becoming more self-sustainable at home, whether we're uh, choosing new policies that are going to benefit us in the future. And it's interesting too, because we a, a big thing on the show has been about uh, dealing with bullies and dealing uh, just Real, you know, growing up and ha- and overcoming obstacles that we've had. And I remember just starting off very young and being put in adult situations. And it did take a toll on uh, myself mentally. And it took a lot of years for me to, whether it was just, you know, okay, you know, I'm going to stop this and I'm going to go to college. I'm going to do the business thing. But then it was like the industry kind of kept, kept calling like cash, come back or whatever. So I feel like there's been... <laughs> different ways of coming back and approaching. And I felt like with the show, it was great to really connect with a lot of um, even artists that I grew up with and we were all going through the same experiences. I feel like growing up in LA too, there's this kind of unspoken thing like, you're exposed to a lot, but then it's like, no, you know, you have to, or even, you know, when you're working, you watch Entourage and it's like an open secret that that's how it is. And then all these years later, be like, oh no, it's not really like that. It's a, yeah. it's a great industry and people are ethical. It's a few beautiful moments that I had too, where there were just, you know, friends of mine who were, who had gone through something, we lost touch, but then to have those experiences come back around and be like, wow, you know, I had no idea you were going through that. And I'm glad that we were there for each other at that time. So I'm, I'm really with you and I commend you for really bringing that out and looking for redemption and looking for uh, strength in your characters and uh, what they demonstrate on their journeys. Yeah, and you know, that's another subject I deal with in in the series is how do you deal with a bully without becoming a bully? Mm-hmm. Like how do you how do you stand up to someone who's bullying you without you yourself falling to their level and becoming what you hated? Like how do you do that? And it's a tough thing to navigate because you do have to stand up for yourself. You do have to love yourself and say I draw this line that's you know, I'm not going to allow this behavior. And I think in our business, that can be really hard because so many people are, you know, you're afraid to do that. You don't want to make someone angry. You don't want to tell them when they're behaving inappropriately because in the past there's situations and plenty of scenarios we've seen come to light where you would be punished for that basically. But I agree that like the industry can be a really beautiful place. I've met so many amazing collaborators and so many people who just love what they do, especially with like executives and producers. I found really great partners in them and to any new writers just starting out, I would say find producers you like, who you can trust with your work. And, you know, you're the one actually doing the writing. So obviously keep that in mind, like you're the one executing this vision. But at the same time, these people that you're working with can be your greatest teammates. And for me, picking good producers and executives and being chosen by good producers and executives has made me feel very safe, like had really positive experiences. And the rare occasions early in my career where maybe, you know, I partnered up professionally with someone who wasn't a safe person. I, I learned a lot. I learned how to stand up for myself essentially and without falling to that level because you never want to become what you hate. That's so beautifully put. And you're the living proof of perseverance and about overcoming obstacles. There's this period from like being a kid. And then it, when I finished college, I had this arrhythmia at the gym and I was out for a minute. I, I get revived. And then it really put so much into perspective. And then that was me just being like, you know, I'm done with the last couple of years and what I've had to go through. And then it was like, okay, I'm going to do the agency thing. And then I'm going to get creative again because you do need those early experiences. And I learned that too early on where you do trust the wrong people. Sometimes you get involved in a project and then so much of your backstory later on as well. You know, I mean, I was able to survive that. You know, I went through that experience. Yeah. Everything was against me. While I like to say like, you are the proof because I look at your journey and you do Lola's, you have your new book series, you're a staff writer for Disney. You have always had your integrity. You've always had your talent. You keep proving yourself and fascinating myself and your audience with everything new that you do. And you're very ambitious. You get the job done and keep on this journey, Valerie. You're an inspiration. 
Yeah, I mean, that's the whole point of doing it. You know, like life is about relationships. That's what really matters. And you had this very scary medical situation. And I'm sure it made you think about like relationships are what matter. Oh, you know, yeah. and, and your passion is what matters because if you're in entertainment and you're telling stories, you have a relationship with an audience. You have a relationship with the people you're creating work for, regardless of whether or not they ever see it, right? Like we yeah. may develop some stuff that goes and some that doesn't, but when we're making art, we should be thinking about the end person that's going to experience that art and what we want them to take away from it. So there's no way, I think, to separate your integrity as a person from the art that you're making and that you want to share with the world. It's the why. And to any new writers out there, I can, I can tell you right now today, the money side of it, it, when you have it, it's great. When you don't, it's still great. And it's just like, don't even think about that aspect of it. Because if you start writing for money, it, nothing will go. Like, I get the most assignments, the most jobs, the most things cooking when I'm just writing what I love and believe in. And I'm thinking about like, this will make someone's life better. Someone will be having a hard day and they'll watch this movie and it'll make them laugh and it'll make them think like, I see myself in that. I see my best friend in that, whatever it is. And that's when my stuff seems to go. But if you start doing the job for anything other than intrinsic value, you're gonna get lost and you're gonna just be chasing things and, and looking for something that ultimately isn't gonna make you happy anyway. So it's really, that's what makes me stay myself. And, and I think some people believe that they can't make it if they're not themselves. And, you know, I'm here to say like, I shot my first movie in the mobile home park that I lived in at the time. Like my mom and I had a, a little mobile home and, you know, I, I loved that house. <laughs> it was a double wide trailer. and. I, I loved it. We had great memories there. It was beautiful. I'm so thankful for it. It was wonderful, you know, and I just use what you have. Use what's in front of you. There are people making movies on cell phones. Don't don't limit yourself thinking I don't have enough to do what I want to do. Make your art today. So beautifully said, and you hit everything on the head. And I mean, I have to put myself in check too, because every time I was, I wasn't doing well. I'm like, I mean, you you actually caught me on that just now, Valerie. It's like I know I was, <laughs> I wasn't being true to myself. I just had this flash. I'm like, every time something didn't work, it was. And it's interesting how that happens because when I say the new renaissance, that's when I, around the time, you know, when I met you and saw Lola's, I was meeting a lot of other filmmakers and some people I worked with and did some uh, movies, you know, and then we went our separate ways. But then I look at, but, you know, that led to something else opening up as well, too. I got on another project and I know what it's like to, of course, we all need to make money. I've taken those uh, those jobs for money, but I mean, it's always the time you least expect when says, hey, you know, catch that one thing you did or that one episode. I'm like, really? I mean, that really, it's when someone comes up to you and says how much to get that validation of like your work meant something or represented something they were going through. So I know, I totally know what, and, and that's what to me makes it all worth it and wants to push to do even better the next time. Yeah. And I think, you know, for actors, it's a little bit harder to sometimes if, if you don't agree with the project, you're not going to be able to have too much effect on it, depending on like what the situation is. I mean, there are certain things I, I will not do as an actor. Like I have turned down auditions for like um, possession movies, like demonic horror things. I don't do that. I just, I don't. And I've gotten offered those things before and I'm like, no, it's just not, not for me. Um, but as a writer, there's a little bit more freedom because I might, I might be given an idea that at first I'm like, oh no, I don't know if that's my space. But then I look at it again and I, I may think like, wait a second, is there an opportunity to say something I care about here? And a lot of the time there is. And sometimes I'll do pitches that take it in a direction they hadn't really thought of because I was just thinking about, well, this is a chance to say something that matters to me. And the ideas that matter to me, it could be anything. It could be Lately, I've been thinking about the importance of family, you know, or lately I've been thinking about how cool it is when you meet someone and at first you're enemies, but then you sort of like become their friend and how strange it is that that first impression can be wrong. Or lately I've been thinking about dating as a woman and like, how do you sort through all these people and figure out who's good and who's bad? Like there's such, there's just such small basic human ideas, but they like... <laughs> bug me and I think about them and I like talk to my friends about it and I say is this important to you because it's important to me is anybody else talking about this and if I get that vibe like is anybody else talking about it then it's on my list of things I want to say and put out into the world and if if a company comes to me and says we have this book we want to adapt are you interested in writing the script and I'm going to pitch on it I'll read it and think like 
does it connect to one of those things essentially you know and is it an opportunity to say something I care about and sometimes it surprises me and I didn't think it was going to be and it is that's what I love about our friendship is every time I talk to you I learn something else I'm like you know you're always like a step ahead of me with like what I'm thinking I'm like yeah Valerie just you everyone listen to Valerie I mean she's <laughs> knows how this process goes and so you premiered at dances with films a few years ago now this year i understand that you were they invited you to be a judge that was so cool i'm really glad you brought that up i wanted to talk about it what yeah. was it like be selected a few years back and you've gone on you've done fascinating things with disney with your books and then now the one festival that put your film your baby up on a platform and a pedestal <laughs> they're asking you what do you think of our festival and our films it was so cool. It was very nostalgic. I just love everyone involved. Leslie, Lindsay, Michael, like great, great people. And I think the special thing about Dances with Films is they really care about the quality of the movies, the emotional content of what they select, what they choose to program, and the people, the filmmakers themselves. Like they care about promoting good people in the industry. And they really truly are a discovery festival. Uh, I think we just had a filmmaker who had her fourth short film in the festival. She just got hired to do a pretty splashy horror film. Um, so that's exciting. Like we have so many alums who have gone on to do great things. And I was really excited to be invited back. We, I think I screened like, I saw 30 short films in a weekend or something. Um, they were all really emotional after each block. I was like, I gotta go get a cup of coffee. <laughs> like, I, I was like laying awake at night, <laughs> staring at the ceiling, thinking about it because they were really moving and well-made. I mean, I, we had a, a very hard time deciding and it sounds so cliche, like all of them were great, but the filmmakers should know all of them were great. And sometimes it just comes down to like a preference and a totally different group of judges would pick a different movie. So that was cool for me to see as an artist too, because we all face so much rejection. You know, it's inevitable, it's part of it. And sometimes the rejection is not because your work was not good. It's just on that particular day, they picked that particular thing. But that said, you know, we love them. We love all the movies. We love the movies we chose. Um, we, the prize for short film went to A Dire Strait. I just want to call you guys out. <laughs> I'll send this to you. Everyone should check out this movie. It's beautiful. It's just so smart. Such a great example of good filmmaking, very subtextual and exciting and like you really see this woman's triumph throughout the movie. So definitely check out A Dire Strait. Valerie, you continue to amaze me with every aspect of the industry that you take on. What's on Valerie's agenda? Oh man, a lot. Um, I'm in pre-production actually. This is a good chance to announce this. Oh my God, <laughs> I'm doing it on air with cash. Um, <laughs> yes, I am in pre-production on uh, my next like run and gun indie film. So I'm excited about that. You get Lola 2.0 on a bigger scale. All right. I'm already intrigued on that pitch. Yes, it's not actually a Lola sequel. It's a totally different movie with totally different uh, characters, tone, people. But I'm taking some of my experience working in fantasy and magic. Hint, okay. Hint, All right. And uh, doing something a little, a little bit different on a bigger scale. So it'll be a feature. And uh, I'm excited to share that. Yeah. Valerie, this just made my morning. Every time um, I talk to you and we have a cup of coffee and we catch up about what's going on. And you've also come to some of my screenings and supported my work, which I'm honored by. And everything that you've, from you being a staff writer at Disney to premiering at Dances with Films to being a judge at Dances with Films, you've done so many eras of the industry. Everyone watching this, it's just, I really, you really need to look at that. Like she, she's educated, she's talented, she doesn't stop. We, we all go through obstacles, but you've taken everything that good or bad, whatever experience it is, and you put it into your art, you prove to be successful. You've been at this for a bit, but I feel like it's just getting started. I can't wait to see the stories that you tell in the future and the different phases of your career. You're someone who I'm honored to know. I consider you a good friend. I have so much admiration for you and your work. Everyone, I need you to check out Lola's Last Letter. It's streaming on all digital platforms. You also need to go on Amazon right now and you need to start reading her trilogy, Animals We Are. And I am so pumped to see your next movie. I can't wait to talk about it further and to hear what's going on with it. Valerie, you're welcome back anytime. And I want you to just keep inspiring and keep doing what you're doing on this epic career of yours. 
Thanks, Cash. You too. I really admire your work as well. And everyone should check out Jack and Coquet. I hope you say that at the end of every episode. I don't know if you do, but I'll say it for you. And uh, yeah, thank you so much for having me. I feel like we had breakfast together, even though we exactly. did it. Next time there needs to be pancakes involved. We'll be pancakes. I got my coffee, but no, I know we're the perfect pancake place and uh, we'll make that happen. Perfect. <laughs> uh, you rock, Valerie. Thank you. Bye, Cash. Thank you. Thank you so much for hanging out with me and Valerie Brandon today. You are on air with Cash.